There is more energy by many, many orders of magnitude in a, in a centimeter cube of space than in all of the observable universe we see today. Yeah, I mean, I know from my own practice, you know, and I would do distance work and it would work, but I wouldn't know why. And when I started to understand and feel it, it just took it to a whole other level of what was possible. Um, you know, what's interesting about, um, you know, the way that I you know, do healing or, you know, facilitating other people's ability to heal themselves is is using a simple biofeedback which asks for a no or a yes mm -hmm. to ask their body what the priority is so it's I wouldn't necessarily call it manipulation but it's like listening to their body's feedback loop mm -hmm. their perspective so that the communication can improve mm -hmm. so that their body does its own healing and I remember you speaking about the no and yes mm -hmm. of how you dialogue with the universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you speak more about that? Because that's always... Well, you see, it's like if you try, you know, the standard views right now from the physics perspective or even biological perspective mm -hmm. is that things are happening under random Right. function right. and that is that this whole universe came together <laughs> right. because of some random right. you know trial and error um, relationships and that the body even in biology works mm -hmm. because of random you know interactions right. yet you know when we look at the universe mm -hmm. I, and when we look for instance, at the biosphere mm -hmm. on our planet, mm -hmm. it doesn't look random at all. Right. Meaning, like, the complexity involved in one blade of grass is right. incredible. Like, with all the microbial life and the DNA and all this stuff, the amount of DNA in one human being is, is insane. The amount of information that's going on, you know, uh, you know, a hundred billion, you know, chemical changes a minute. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. it's remarkable. And to think that this mm -hmm. is all happening randomly right. doesn't add up. Right. Meaning, if you actually do the statistics and the calculation on what are the probabilities of anything like that happening, mm -hmm. it just doesn't add up at all in like 14 billion years right. since the Big Bang it you know you don't have enough time like mm -hmm. you need billions and billions and billions and trillions of, of years more mm -hmm. you know to, ha to go through all the possibilities right it'd be equivalent to like taking a Boeing 747 for instance breaking it down to its smaller pieces mm -hmm. like all the way down to the little you know, integrated circuits and everything and all the little teeny boats and stuff and then throwing them all in the air mm -hmm. and then, you know, when they came back down, it'd be a functioning Boeing right. 747. Like, the probabilities of that happening are extremely low, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one human being, like, exceeds those probabilities. Right. So the... So... The idea that the whole thing came in randomly is, is, is probably not correct. Um, so if it's not, the, the problem with that discussion is when you start talking like that, the next assumption that comes in is the religious assumption, is that right. there's a God and the God, you know, maybe he's sitting on a big throne and he's got binoculars and he's organizing everybody right. um, and everything. Um, and, you know, okay, um, that's one point of view. It's unlikely that that's what's happening. Uh, but there's, a, there's an intermediary view. And that is, all you need for self-organization is feedback. Mm -hmm. You just need a system that's talking to itself. Mm -hmm. So that it says yes that works, no, that doesn't, yes, that works, so it's learning. Yes. So that there's a learning structure 
that there's memory in the system mm -hmm. and, 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 and feedback. Mm -hmm. And so if we, for instance, take the calculation of a blind person ordering a Rubik's Cube and make the calculation if they were to move and move every second, how many uh, seconds it would take for them to order the Rubik's Cube under completely random function because they can't see mm -hmm. um, and go through all the probabilities of a Rubik's Cube, right. um, it's, it exceeds the Big Bang. Right. Right? right. It's billions and billions of years. Right. And that's just a Rubik's Cube, which is much more simple <laughs> than like a human being. Right. But if we say to the blind person, every time they make a move, yes or no, one simple feedback, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, within two and a half minutes, the Rubik's Cube will be ordered. Right. So you're going from billions of years of probabilities. Right to two and a half minutes right. by one simple feedback. Right. And so it's most likely that there's a feedback mechanism mm -hmm. and that the feedback mechanism is the feedback between what we call the material world, yeah. which is in fact, when we look closely, a little oscillation of the vacuum itself mm -hmm. and what we call space, mm -hmm. right? So there's information going from within the system, like let's say we take any system mm -hmm. from within the cell, from within the atom, from within the nuclei, to without, mm -hmm. or like from within the sun to without. We see it as radiation. And a feedback from the space mm -hmm. back in. Mm -hmm. And in the case of the sun or anything else, we would call it gravity, mm -hmm. right? the force mm -hmm. that pulls mm -hmm. in. And so the feedback is between electromagnetic fields and gravitational fields. Information mm -hmm. moving through a system. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden you start to understand, you know, there must be some very fundamental geometry right away with your fingers just doing it. Next thing you know, you're, you're thinking toruses, you know, which is like a donut form where information can move out at the equator and back in and so on. And you're, you're starting to think spin, mm -hmm. you know, and all these things become possible. And, 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 and you're now touching on the fundamental organizing principles of creation. And what produces the complexity, and what produces, you know, even um, the experience of consciousness. Right. Right? Because the experience of consciousness is to be self-aware. Right. And that is a feedback. Right. You know, so you can see that mechanism acting at all levels mm -hmm. from the gravitational field and electromagnetic fields of physics to, you know, the exploration of the source of consciousness and the relationship of consciousness to the material world. So if people want to become expert at changing anything or improving anything or having influence in their lives and, and for the planet, it would follow then from what you're saying that the better we get at tapping into that feedback loop, understanding that feedback loop, understanding the dynamics of it and how do I ask the right questions so that I'm getting the no and the yes, tapping into that deeper wisdom that then creates the change on the inside rather than I think what we're seeing a lot of is, you know, a person outside looking to another person outside and being like, I'm going to change you. People might call it like, commonly call it like the little voice inside, you know, the little, mm -hmm. you can uh, whisper, you know. I like to think of it that it's only a little voice because we've built up a huge wall right. between the voice and us. Mm -hmm. So the wall is so thick, the voice on the other side is the whole universe screaming. So it's screaming really loud on the other side of the wall like, hello, anybody there? And on, you know, 
on our side, it's sounding like the little voice, right? right. <laughs> and but I think that more we start to listen to that voice, mm-hmm. louder it gets, mm-hmm. and you know, more and more we start to sense a sense of direction, a sense of belonging, a sense of connection with everything, with the universe, with everything around us, with nature, mm-hmm. you know, even with the table, mm-hmm. you know, and the chair. And, and mm-hmm. you know, and it, it might become more difficult to harm, you know, an animal, or, you know, to like, we start to become more harmonious. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, hopefully, we start to understand better how these dynamics work, mm-hmm. and we can start to engineer these dynamics so they produce more of what we want and less of what we don't want. Mm-hmm. And that's a learning curve, and we're all on it, you know. Right. And sometimes we do good, sometimes maybe we don't. Mm-hmm. But that's okay because we're all learning. Right. And when we learn we're feeding it back to the universe through this incredible structure that connects us all. Right. And so the whole is learning too. Right. Through us. Mm-hmm. And so it's an amazing, amazing realization. Mm-hmm. And you realize the opportunity you have and the role you have to play and the importance of your consciousness and your awareness and your feedback into the network of creation. Right, because everybody has their own unique perspective that only they can have. Exactly. And unless we can have that observation with that observation and that observation, you don't get as a complete picture. Right. There's pieces missing. And, you know, I like to take it inside the body as well and you know, what does my shoulder think? You know, what's its perspective? And what are my lungs' perspective? And are they also able to hear their voice? So it's like these layers of it. And um, for me, the, the embodiment piece, really being able to feel that and feel the voice in an even more tangible and um, high definition way through our physicality, through our body parts is seems really key. So can you talk a little bit about the, you know, what what is our physical body and w- why do we even have one? Like, why aren't we just a head <laughs> floating around? <laughs> right, right. Um, well, you know, that that's a really good question. I mean, I think that in one way, uh, yeah, to become aware, you know, like people say I'm one person, right? right. But every <laughs> cell in your body could say, wait a minute, yeah. we're like a hundred trillion cell down here, yeah. right? And then if, every, if any cell said, well, I'm one cell, then the atoms could say, well, wait a minute, we're mm-hmm. like a few billion atoms in here right. that makes up the cell and so on and so on. So, you know, we can't, like, the, so I think becoming aware, like you're saying, what is my shoulder saying? You could even go, like, deeper and say, what are my cells saying? So, like, yeah. actually experiencing yourself as all the agglomeration of your cells, mm-hmm. as individual little entities that makes up you, mm-hmm. and then... And then even going to a deeper level and experiencing all the cells made out of atoms mm-hmm. that makes up you. And every time you do that, every time you go to a deeper level, it's like you get a larger perspective. Because you get more information as you get into teeny and teenier pieces right. in your awareness. So it's like you're going from a very low definition camera that can only take in so much through the same space Mm -hmm. to suddenly you've got you've tripled the amount of definition right so it's the same space but the resolution went way up right that's right exactly the resolution went way up and all of Mm -hmm. a sudden you can see 
-hmm. or you can't you have access to that much more information right in the same amount of space which is your body right so when you're saying you know we can see them you know we can see ourselves we can see all these parts how do we see it is it a seeing is it a feeling and how do we know if we've seen it right if it's <laughs> correct what we're seeing um that's a really good question i think from my personal experience I would say that it's initially much more a feeling mm. than anything else. Mm -hmm. And if you talk to many of the masters or, or people that have done extraordinary things, like discovered extraordinary things, or if you read many of the life stories of great inventors and great thinkers, mm -hmm. typically their discoveries always come from an internal gut feeling they might call it a gut feeling or yeah. an intuition the listening to the little voice right, right. and when you when, you know i think that initially it's it's trusting that feeling mm -hmm. trusting that voice mm -hmm. and eventually the resolution is going to start to increase mm -hmm. and then it, i think I mean, for me, and I think for many, it starts to becoming even visual. Right. So if you have like a torn cartilage or you have a torn muscle, whatever, you know, or not even that extreme, just like a sore place, whatever, you can see like that region inside your body seems like to be dimmer and, you know, you, you can start to see the resolution. Mm -hmm. And then you can get, it can get really, really strong, really, really accurate, you know, what you're experiencing mm -hmm. inside yourself, all the way down to the atomic level mm -hmm. and the subatomic level. And, you know, and through that, you might eventually, like, be able to, like, visualize the whole universe. Right. And certainly in many you know, very advanced masters that um, talked about their moment of illumination or the, the moment of reaching nirvana. Or, mm -hmm. yeah. Typically, they describe having a sense of unity with the whole universe. Right. Having a sense of having answer to any questions they have. Right. And so on, which is very much what I'm describing here. Right. So I think that it starts with listening to the little voice, listening to the little feeling inside of you, and basically just stopping to take the time to listen. You know, and even if it's a few minutes every day, mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference. So say that little voice is saying, ah help me or I'm in pain how to so say so that's our feedback we're able to say okay I, I hear that that's the feedback now what about the feed forward right so so then you can start to engineer it you can maybe say well what is the need